Hello and welcome to In The Room, a unique interview series which explores the craft, the wonder, the artistry of artists from the BAME and LGBTQ plus communities. We are absolutely delighted to be joined by Jamal Westman, the original Alexander Hamilton in the West End production of Hamilton. How are you today? Damn, as an intro. Um, <laughs> I'm well, thank you. Yourself? Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Obviously, we're in the middle of lockdown, so lots to adjust to. Yes. Um, how, how have you found this time? Testing, challenging in all the ways I'm sure many people have felt um, yeah, no different in that respect. Um, but, you know, in all challenges, in all obstacles, try and just find things to appreciate. Counting blessings, counting the many yeah. blessings, um, you know, during this time. It's affected, you know, family, friends, close people, but it, it doesn't take much to feel, uh, you know, the pain of, of, you know, people you don't know, people on the internet, yeah. and, you know, however you kind of come into knowledge of that. But I'm taking appreciation, man, I'm taking appreciation for I'm, I'm well, I'm alive, I'm here, waking up every morning, um, do you know what I mean? Family, do you know what I mean? Like th those yeah. things, that I think there's loads of things that we I speak for myself, I may have taken for granted prior to the crisis and the pandemic. Do you know what I mean? Or just didn't, you know, I've had full, a fuller appreciation for it since, for sure. Oh. Oh, there we go. There you are. Okay. <laughs> You're going to move. But yeah, man. Uh, uh, what? what? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's that's where I'm at right now. Um, but yeah, I'm good, man. I had ups and downs. Um, you know, I read a, a thing about people's mental health during this time has really dipped, like um, depression and stuff like that. And I know I had anxiety during this period as well. Just like ups and downs. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it just kind of crept up on me. I didn't really anticipate it. And then. Wow. You know, there it was. I was like, man, I feel really anxious right now. Um, but again, it made me think more about my health in a way that I didn't think about it before. Um, but that's also just comes with getting older. I think you <laughs> take it like, for instance, I'm having more probiotics um, and yogurts, and it's doing wonders. I'm okay. literally, I'm just going to be the guy that promotes kefir yogurt right now. Let me just say, kefir yogurt. Right. Okay, where can yeah, we work? Sure I'm about to speak about it. I am on. I'm on the, the same healthy living. It's the one. I I literally had it. I was like, whoa! Like everything's better. Um, oh no! I'm gonna have to jump on because I've been having fruits and yogurts and things like that. I'm I'm gonna have to <laughs> jump on. It's just been so, yeah, it's so inspiring seeing how you've like developed as an artist and obviously this time has been quite crucial. I wonder when, when did it all start for you? Was it during you know, school or were there any like particular family um, inspirations or experiences that got you uh, interested in uh, acting or, um, or theatre? Yeah, I say it started, well, it probably started, I don't know if school was necessarily the place it started, but it certainly was a place where I experimented with notions of performance. Um, but I guess that travels and it, it found itself in different places. It wasn't necessarily acting. I, I was singing when I was quite like really young, like there's old like VHS tapes of me singing Seal or something like that. Um, Love it. And uh, also uh, I, was, I loved football. Um, my dad was a coach, so I used to play football lots. And that was just an element of performance, right? It's an element of um, training and then there's a match or there's a day you have to perform and you have to step up and you know everything's on you're present you're with the rest of your team and so there's lots of parallels in both of those experiences that led me to acting it was just yeah notions of performance so uh i think i got my first real taste of it um in when i did a nativity when i was like you know 10 or 11 and that was it i i had I, I got the I, I got to improvise. I was encouraged to improvise. So, well, I don't know if I maybe I just did, yeah. but it, it, it you know, <laughs> the lines that I was given uh, ran out because it was basically Noah's Ark, and I had to introduce all the animals. And I, think I, uh, maybe, nice. I don't know, but maybe something happened, and I was just started riffing, and I started, you know, it, people enjoyed it. So I think I was like 
this is cool. This is cool. Didn't really cement it there, but then I did some um, some school plays in in secondary school, and then yeah, man, I was from there. I was like, okay, this is cool. I'm enjoying this. Um, in terms of yeah. questioning people, characters, um, sitting amongst people of different year groups, but feeling like an equal, feeling like my voice um, was just as uh, worthy and worth listening to as the next person's, whether older or, or a teacher or whatever. So yeah, those were the the, the moments that really gave me a, a sense of confidence, really, and um, a sense of worth that is difficult to find, really, in, in secondary school, unless you're smashing your top grades or um, yeah. you're excelling in a particular subject or you know you're just really popular and people like you at school you know um <laughs> you're just cool you know uh, i don't think i really fit in any of those brackets too tough like you know i was cool i guess <laughs> saying <Well>. no, <laughs> i'm not giving myself no raise but um yeah you know i've gone with people um and so that's all that, also that as well, isn't it? It's the environment, an environment where I thought I could express myself. And uh, yeah. that's not always the case, uh, particularly at an all boys school where people can express themselves to their fullest um, because of a kind of imposing outside world in a way and all the kind of um, harshness of that world um, being found in um, the voices of young people who don't really fully grasp consequence and um wow. and empathy in a way as much as um as much as one can do um as a human being so yeah, yeah man finding a place to to have fun and and express myself in a million different ways was uh was yeah i mean just as a human being and then yeah. a levels and then the drama and a levels on and then that's what my teacher was like hey there's a thing called drama school I was like, okay, cool. And I just thought that was it. Um, yeah, so I don't know that, yeah, so, somewhere in there, I was like, hey, I, I think I could, this is the thing that I'm enjoying. Um, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. I think it was great how the way you spoke about, you know, experience being in a boys' school and different, you know, the ideas of consequence and things like that. I wonder, you know, growing up in in, in South London, I've, I've, I've grown up in Croydon, um, but myself, and I always think any part of London is so rich with culture and diversity. I wonder how much, you know, London has become a character in your life or how, um, you know, growing up in, in South London has kind of moulded you as a person and as an artist. Major. Oh, major. Yeah. Um, I'm fully London. I think, <laughs> yeah, just like, yeah, the yeah. schools that I went to, um, the family friends we had whether I was in you know with school or out of school um yeah it was an eclectic mix of different people with different experiences um and different opinions and yeah so that was like an integral just a it was just a way of life I don't know it was just um like a fish in water that's that's just it that's just all I all I've known and wow. so then yeah kind of um being faced with um, kind of one homogenous demographic at particular instances in my life was a bit of a shock to the system. I was like, this is, you know, feeling like the odd one out. I think when everyone's different or when everyone acknowledges their difference and there's a cohesiveness within that, um, that's where I fit in. Um, so, you know, obviously that led me to somewhere like Hamilton where I was like, this is, I'm at home. This is my yeah. home. Yeah. Um, because we all just knew we were from different walks of life. And that was what made it so great. That's what made our experience so special um, is that we could unite those different experiences um, to create an incredible show and also to celebrate each other's individuality at the same time. Um, so yeah, man, that was just all my way of life. London's that, London is that. Um, yeah. You know, uh, well, the London I know anyway, and the London you know, Croydon, <laughs> most deaf, Brixton, most deaf, um, and anywhere that I've traveled to, North, West, East, that's it. That's how it okay. Um Yeah, man. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that because that's not always the case for people um, in this country. You know, some people are yeah. born outside of this situation, environment. I've got friends that are born out of this environment in, in you know, uh, in the, the home counties, as it were. And and when they came to London, they were like, whoa, like, this is this is amazing. Do you know what I mean? It, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. And um, But then also, because of that, difference 
um, there's a, a differing opinion of uh, uh, in politically, um, which I didn't realize I was being kind of not necessarily indoctrinated into. But I didn't realize I was being kind of led into, I, you know, I didn't realize that's what led me to, oh, wow, people don't think the same way that we think or, or Londoners think or, you know. Yeah, because you, you trained at one of the, the leading drama schools, Rada, and I just, mm. you know, just drop that in there. <laughs> did, did, did yeah. you, how was that? How was that experience? Did you find that you know there was a, there was a clash of ideals and and um, did you feel you know a, a sense of of, uh, of of difference there or, or or how did you 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 you, you uh, find that experience coming from quite a vibrant um, city? It was um, yeah, I, I felt it was a bit of a shock to the system, actually. Um, you know, Rada's going through a wholesale change at the moment. It's having a lot, you know, a lot of institutions are having a reckoning, if they're willing to have it. You know, some some people, are, you know, some institutions are like, oh, you know, post Black Lives Matter movement, and as it were, and all the things that have happened over the past, you know, few years, frankly, but obviously that peaked uh, last year. Um, some are choosing to kind of acknowledge that and their role within that, whether they're kind of upholding and perpetuating a certain um, uh, inhumanity and um, uh, racist ideology or, or, or um, mentality. And some are actually acknowledging it and going, you know what, we need to change up. Rada's right one of them. Um, because it's an institution that's been around for a long time and has upheld a particular type of ideology and ethos. Um, whilst also I had the best acting training in terms of technology. Yeah. There was a lot of archaic things there. Um, and yeah, I came face to face with those. Um, oh, okay. the first year I acknowledged that um, and I wasn't the only one. Whether it was me being um, a mixed race person or it was women in the school or it was any person of the LGBTQ community, it was those certain things started hitting us a little bit different. Um, and it's always difficult, you know, as a microcosm of the kind of bigger world and society is when you feel like the only one or like you don't feel like you have a voice to challenge those things because those things right. have been around longer than you have. I felt that, but fortunately I was surrounded by people who also um, had, you know, things that they wanted to address um, within the institution. So I felt um, encouraged and supported um, by my peers for sure. That's wonderful. I mean, before we kind of launch into the big, H word, which I'm sure we we we've we've sort of teased a bit. Oh. I know you've had um some incredible um leaps. You know you performed at the Globe, at the Royal Court Theatre. How was your what was your first experiences like in your foray into the theatre industry, like performing at such iconic venues? So after after drama school, yeah, after drama school, yeah, man, I had the best time going to um the Royal Court, um. Yeah, couldn't have asked for a better theatre to go to. Um, I was very lucky, very, very lucky. I didn't have an agent, um, but a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, Luke Brady, um, had auditioned for it. He had an agent. He was like, I've just done this thing. I think you'd be really great for it. Um, and so, yeah, I wrote to the director. He, I think, wrote to the right, he texted the right, he just, whatever, just to get me in the room. <laughs> um, and that's a major thing, you know. Um, he's obviously a very special person, but like that mentality is, what kind of keeps us together as a people is just supporting each other always um, and helping each other up and he certainly did that for me in that in that instance and um i had the best time at royal court it was a wicked uh, play by nathaniel martino white called torn um but royal court was a really cool space um because it was all about new ideas it was about hearing different voices voices that hadn't been heard before as opposed to hearing the same old voice or same old voices um and stories it was like hey let's open this up let's keep it open um which i was super grateful for yeah and so yeah when i was opening those first those first few rehearsals um reading into this text i didn't feel not that i necessarily do even if i was doing a classic piece or anything but i didn't feel this kind of responsibility to people that had done it before or for right. like being squeezed into something that kind of preceded me it was more you are the beginning of this you are the you're giving the life to this so bring what you have to this which was um uh, you know as a first kind of going out or an outing 
uh, after drama school. That was, yeah, yeah, super grateful for that. And had a wicked company, uh, great time. Just had a great time. Um, it felt like a passion project because it was very close to me in terms of the yeah. world as well. Because um, it was set in like Brixton and there's a lot of mixed race families. So I got to, in a way, explore certain aspects of my own life um, within that. So yeah, mm. very special to me. And then uh, after that, went to Shakespeare's Globe and did a classic piece. I did um, White Devil by John Webster. Um, and that was, that I actually had way more fear with that. And I think that was, again, whilst people say, hey, this is just a new thing, go with it, bring yourself to this. I also felt this kind of, well, I've been trained classically. So mm -hmm. I need to like, this is meant to be my bread and butter. Um, right. And I felt, yeah, kind of the pressure of, of expectation in a way that I didn't feel, and it's obviously the language and things like that, which would daunt anyone, I guess particularly in those first goings, you have to really kind of get your head into it. But I had a great time with that as well, to be honest. Um, you know, the piece was amazing. I think it's what they say about John Webster, that oh. wished he'd written all those plays instead of instead of Shakespeare and seen what Webster wow. had to come up with. Because he did, you know, Duchess of Malfi and, and uh, the White Devil, incredible plays. And, and White Devil was so relevant, still relevant, in terms yeah. of corruption, racism, sexism, yeah. um, religion. It's all in there, man. It's all in there. I'm kind of hoping to one day see that play again. Yeah, most most definitely. Wonderful experiences. I suppose at that point you had done a lot of straight theatre. Um, I believe at school you might have done a bit of musical theatre. What what was it that attracted you to Hamilton? Was it was it hearing some of the music, or was it just an opportunity for you what, what what was the process like um in your first engagement with Hamilton so my first engagement with it um was a friend of mine in drama school um Bart Lambert he great guy by the way shout yeah. out yeah um, <laughs> he was like yo I'm listening to this thing uh, yeah. it's like a hip-hop rap musical but my London hip hop rap head was just I couldn't fathom the concept of rapping in a musical. Um, given you know, I just think about what would I don't know what would Tupac say? What would any of the people I listened to back in the day say? What would NWA say? Like, you know I mean? I'll be like, uh, yeah, what would he say? <laughs> what would they say though? What would they say? And I'm sure they all said it. Even Ice Cube to this day would be like, but yeah, having seen it, of course. Yes. I don't know, might have a, a few questions to ask uh, and a few raised eyebrows. So that's yeah. how I was to it, to be honest. Um, denying, I guess, the fact that, you know, it, it was a union that, you know, eventually, been, you know, I, I loved and celebrated and, and benefited from in so many different ways. Um, but yeah, I just didn't give it at that time, the time of day. I just don't think I could, because also at that time, me and Bar and a few others were sharing rap albums with each other. And so a musical just didn't really fit into that kind of category at the time. And I think I had previously seen people try and do rap musicals and it just didn't pull it off. And I was like, yeah. mm, you know, and so I just didn't take it. Fast forward, maybe like, I don't know, half a year, a year or something like that, because that was the final year of um, drama school. I listened to it because I, I, my, my agent called me and said, hey, there's uh, a meeting for this thing. Um, have a listen and, and, you know, we'll go and do it. I listened to it. Yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it was amazing. It was yeah. uh, incredible. And, um, oh, yeah. And then it was like a matter of also trying to get into it, trying to, you know, learn those uh, lyrics and get into the cadences and the attitude and the delivery of it and oh that was that was the where the joy really started like seeping in I was like you know it's just yeah. when you hear a favorite rapper and then you start learning that and then you can do it and then you're like oh my god like you know I feel like you're just that much closer to um to uh to to, to, to the glory of of the, the writer and um yeah, had some amazing auditions, had some amazing auditions um, because of my joy of it, because of um, what I felt. Um, and this is, again, comes from that thing of like what musicals are and then what rap is, and then really bringing the rap element, the hip hop element um, to the musical. 
Um, yeah, particularly in those opening moments of the show and just what Hamilton brings with, you know, my shot and yeah, Aaron Bernstein and any of those things. Yorktown is just like, yes, it's a musical. There's no doubts. But that rap element is the, you know, that's the big canon. So, yeah. hella fun. Oh my days. Wow. So much fun with that. Um, so what, what was the moment like when you were in front of Lynn, Manuel, and Miranda, in front of Thomas Carroll, in front of Cameron McIntosh, and you were just about to receive? What was that moment like in the audition room? The audition process. Um, it was really cool. It was really cool. I think it was cool because I felt really confident. I'd been given confidence. I've been instilled with confidence in those earlier auditions when, you know, when you get a recall or people just give you good feedback, take that. I just take, I mean, that's, yeah, cool, great. Particularly when I care about it, you know, positive reinforcement goes a long way, no matter what age you are. Um, yeah. And so I, I soak that up, man, because that can sometimes be hard to find. Sometimes you get a no, but no one tells you no, you just don't hear back. So I was happy to hear that <laughs> and happy that it was a positive uh, feedback. Um, and I kind of I wrote off that. I wrote off my own faith in, in like knowing that I knew it and that um, I had something I could offer. I just felt, and also it was like an, a, a really great opportunity to collaborate with the, um, with the originators, with the writers um, and, the, yeah. and all the creative, the creative team. So yeah, being in that room, I also managed to pick up on, which is pretty easy to see, it wasn't really picking up on anything. But it's like they're a group of friends. They're a group of friends um, yeah. who are just, they've hit it. They've hit the right tone, the right collaboration. They caught the spark. It's almost like um, uh, 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 my shot, the opening of my shot, which is just a cipher, a group of friends ciphering. And they're like, hey, okay, there's a certain combination, chemistry going on here. And that's what I felt. It was so powerful when you walk in that room. You're like, these are guys that are just, on a side of thing so let me come and bring my thing uh to this to this yeah. amazing thing that they created together um and contribute in that way and so that's what it felt like it felt really cool it was very intimate um but it's just like vibing vibing on some really cool lyrics that thank god i knew the words to and <laughs> i enjoyed <laughs> and, um, yeah man that yeah dope really dope okay. i did feel any kind of, and also like, yeah, tell me, what else can I do to this? What else can I do to make this better? Um, yeah. Did it. you feel there was like a translation? Because I know you said you were bringing yourself and with the cast, you had your identities and it was a mountain pot of different cultures and backgrounds. As a you know, person of both Caribbean and Irish heritage, did you bring a part of your identity into finding, you know, um, the, the role of, of, of Hamilton, who is mixed race and is, is an, an, uh, a son of immigrants and is an, an immigrant himself? Yeah, definitely, 100%. Um, yeah, it was, it, it was um, so clear and, you know, I just felt that pull, that feeling of identity, that feeling of, um, of uh, understanding um, when I think about my grandparents. Um, on my Irish and my, and my Jamaican side, like both of them had to come from another country for um, to make a better life for themselves. Um, and they came effectively, well, I'm not sure my Irish granddad would say as much, but it felt like the motherland. Yeah, they, my granddad would definitely never. He's not. <laughs> not as an Irishman, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but in, 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 any, in any regard, it felt like going to a place to better their lives, going to a place that had, uh, uh, professes itself to be the kind of leading, shining beacon of freedom and opportunity um, in any sense. Um, so yeah, most, most, most definitely I, I, I felt a, a connection in that respect. And um, yeah, man, but then that's also, again, just being a Londoner. Yeah. That's to everyone, everyone I grew up with in, uh, in secondary school, same thing. Um, any of my family friends, same thing. It was like, we all come from different places. And then obviously in, in the show as well, you know, um, in terms of the company, different places, we all come to this place to create an amazing thing. We came for ourselves, but now we're here for each other. Um, and it's a unified um, endeavor. 
yeah, man, I felt that. I felt that. You know, Britain would not be Britain were it not for people coming from other places. It was built as America was, as they say, as is known historically, or is not known enough, but is the case. It was built off the back of immigrants. It was built off the back of people traveling from one place to the next. Humanity only got here from people traveling from one place to the next. No one <laughs> in the Northern Hemisphere were it not for people traveling from one place to the next. In America, there would be, like, talking about, oh, people coming across the border from Mexico. People for thousands of years have been traveling from the South of America to the North of America way yeah. before any settlers turned up. So, boy, yeah, I felt like wow. I was celebrating, honoring, um, paying homage to, in a, in my own small way, to that, to that mm. thing that, you know, speaks before me and will speak long after me, um, no matter what borders I'm right. put up. Um, yeah, man. I got, I got a chance to see Hamilton, um, I think in the January, uh, after it opened, so it was very, very fresh. But one of the remarkable things was this sense of unity and of collaboration and everyone sharing the stage, honouring the story, honouring the themes. And this was obviously a piece that has been monumental in the, mus the musical theatre canon. Can you describe, can you tell us, because we weren't in that, that but we, we were just kind of watching it. Um, what was it like? <laughs> being uh, in that bubble, you know, every day getting a chance to perform this wonderful uh, material. Um, amazing. I mean, tiring. I will say that. I will say <laughs> day in, day out. That that's some hard ish. But okay. in that you know, in that was what an amazing feeling to feel this way, doing something we know is a you know, like what we're offering not only to each other, but to any audience that steps in, to any young kid that hasn't seen the show before, any person that hasn't, or even people that have seen the show many times, is we're offering something that is, you know, the point of theater, and then some, it's cathartic, it's educational, it's um, edifying, uplifting. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you constantly get reminders of that as we do the show, when we see a, you know, a little kid um, just, you know, beaming, you know, that's an <laughs> Um and I think that's it, you know, um, even with the, you know, I came with tiredness in the opening of that, but like, you know, so we're all tired, right? You know, in any respect, we all feel this, you know, in any regard, whether it's physically exerting ourselves in a musical seven shows a week or eight shows a week for the rest of my peers, or it's like going to do the nine to fives, or it's like having to deal with oppression. Like there's a notion of tiredness that we all feel. Don't you want to be tired? and doing a good thing, like, and most people feel like they are, right? They're providing in whatever respect, but when we were doing that show, no matter how tired we were, no matter how aching we were, it was like, we're doing an amazing thing. We're providing this amazing story and telling it, um, which is, you know, goes back thousands of years, storytelling, and we're telling a, a truly incredible, remarkable, you know, revolutionary story in terms of musical theater. Um, I mean, the first days of rehearsals, Oh my God. I mean, I, it was like, I don't know, like everyone got to go, got the golden ticket to go to win. <laughs> yeah. It was like, yo, we're here. We've done it. Um, but the sweetness of it, the reward was like some wholesome feelings of like arriving, like all um, the things that we did tried to achieve all the things that our family had tried to achieve, do you know what I mean? It allowed us to be in this room to celebrate that journey that they've made, that we've made, um, and then also just celebrate us as a collective, as a diverse group of individuals with incredible talents um, that we can all like boo each other up with, we can raise each other up with, rise up with, of course. Um, yeah, man, and so, yeah, the, the the feelings of doing that night in, night out, never, never left, really, never left. Okay. So did, were you able to kind of instill, you know, with this being such a unique opportunity, was there, like, freedom um, to kind of make some differences to the, the UK production? Did were, were there any, like, significant changes, or was it as close to the the version on, on uh, a, a, a Broadway? For sure. The... the the kind of 
structure of it, the core of it, the skeleton of it was definitely all there. Um, you know, there's, you know, can't start freestyling off the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In terms of Especially our, when it's going to at that fast pace as well. Right, right, right. No, right. <laughs> um, but the, yeah, we were encouraged to be ourselves. We were encouraged to bring ourselves to it, our own individuality um, and our own interpretations uh, for sure. Uh, I, I definitely felt that freedom. There was, you know, certainly a parameter of which to work in, but that felt like an open space. Um, Tommy Kell definitely made that uh, apparent to us. Of course, when it comes to the choreography, no, you've got to be hitting them marks. <laughs> Andy, thank you, boo, I ain't messing around. If it comes yeah. to the notation and the notation, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Alice Lacamoire is going to be on you. So, <laughs> for sure, there were certain standards that we had to meet. Um, but, I think it was apparent um, we met them and then some, you know, with our own individuality, originality, we just, you know, and also again, that feeling that we had from the moment we walked in that room, it's, it, it was palpable in the way we performed and never stopped. Um, you know, it's, it's, yeah, man, it's, it's uh, wow. self-actualizing when you can just, push past any obstacle of self and go to that next place, to that higher place. Um, in fact, you know the film Soul? You've Soul, and then... Soul, the Pixar film. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I need to see it. Um, Everyone keeps saying I'm so sorry. No, no, don't be sorry, man. I'm excited <laughs> for you. I'm excited for you. You're about to see it again. Oh, but for the first time. Um, yeah. But there's basically a moment which any, you know, musician, people who are focused on a thing, here, footballers, whatever it is, and yeah. Kind of go to the next place, like uh, spiritually, you go to another level. And I felt like we, as a company, on so many occasions, did that. And that was in uh, whether it was like in those early days of rehearsal, yeah, like, just freshness and oh, just that feeling, man, um, which is addictive. And then also when we're in concert with the audience in that very unique one time only one. This is the only combination. It's only going to be this way once. Um, and we found it there as well with the audience who gave us so much energy, so much joy, um, so attentive. Um, oh, man. And so, yeah, we went so, so many times, man. Went to that high place. Yeah. <laughs> you felt yourself, you know, um, lost within it. I mean, the best ones where that was the case, where we felt so alive, so earth, so grounded, but yet so elated was um, when we did shows for young people. Uh, uh, truly the most special special times my favorite yeah. times on stage with you know all that all the you know doing it in front of the future yeah yeah the future man the future and kind of being like here's here is our offering to you to take it wherever you need to take it wherever you want to take it um hopefully we can inspire hopefully we can ground we can whatever our offering is you take from this take it and they gave it back <laughs> they gave it back <laughs> um, i can imagine amazing amazing that's super special i suppose were, were there any like keys i mean i'm sure you you honored the craft and was able to kind of find inspiration and joy out of the wealth of material across the board but were there any key songs that kind of meant something to you or any songs you just loved to to, to perform like for me how much um satisfied yeah, just gets me going <laughs> i just think it's just wonderful in the choreography and how it's all in reverse and all that those wonderful things it's such a sick song so like so good um but were there any any like key songs um from uh, the song that you did or, or someone else it varied you know it varied across the board songs popped up at different moments um is again like yeah for sure like I think even in the early days like right hand man but that was because of the audition and because of you know you overcome fears and what have you and you nice. and you excel and you you move up it's so like that felt like that throughout the audition process until maybe the last one actually um where I had to sing um quite it's quite uptown and um yeah that hit me different but then again, that song hits me different and has hit me in so many different ways throughout the time I was doing it. Um, yeah. But then every song has that 
in different moments, something's happening outside the building, whether it's political or cultural or social, um, something personally, um, and certain songs pick up, certain lyrics in a song pick up a little bit different. Someone's in the audience that you're aware of. I'm, I, I never really deny, you know, some people are like, oh, I don't care who's out there. But I think it's, you know, no matter, someone's gonna be out there, you might yeah. not I'm going, oh my God, so-and-so's there. But it's kind of like, hmm, the, the, their presence makes me think, I don't know, this is my opinion or this is how I feel about them. And this is, when I say this, I'm conscious of that. Do you know what I mean? I think that's an undeniable. Right. Um, so yeah, different songs have popped up at different moments, for sure. Um, when, when there's young people, thinking about a young Hamilton, um, facing up to George Washington. I was thinking as a young black boy, trying to face up to George Washington saying, call me son again, or I'm just trying to do my thing. You're getting in my way. Um, I felt that and, and it, it sat with me in a different way. I was like, wow, you know, having pulled it from my own experiences for sure, but then feeling that responsibility to, to young kids out there as well. Um, uh, that would be enough, which follows after that, that moment, meet me inside. Um, it's different. It's different. So many different ways. Uh, so, I think what's been what, what's really really great is that you've been able to do such a wealth of of material, and I suppose you, get, you, you got a chance to meet um, Prince Harry and Meghan. I suppose what what was it like to then be offered the the opportunity to do Hamilton again, but now in a different city? Just to add to that. Definitely, yeah. Prince Harry, Meghan, <laughs> big up, big up, big up. But then uh, also Tina Turner came through. Wow. Came through, Lenny Henry. Not people, not people, not people, but you know, you've got to put Tina in there. Hey, Shirley, of course. Bass, Shirley Bassey. Oh, my. So legends, absolute legends. Um, pure legends came through. Pure legends came through. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was a blessing to be amongst those two, though. Um, but yeah, man. Um, LA was, yeah, that was a, a madness. You know, the idea of going there um, felt, yeah. You know, um, the idea of doing it in front of the home, a home crowd, as, as it were, of Americans as well. Um, also the idea of being the only Brit, a sense of that feeling of being an outsider and using the vernacular, the language, the cadence of a style and form that was um, developed in, in America, you know, so that there was elements of that that was like really dope. But then also just um, with the way that it was explained to me was, yo, we're gonna pick some people from different companies and we're just gonna try and make this like super group. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, I was already in the superest of groups ever, ever known to man. Of course. Um, with my <laughs> peoples. Um, but it was really cool. Just the idea of rediscovering it with like just a whole new mashup of people who'd done it already as well um, was really cool. The um, Pantages is like 3,000 CR, so just a huge space. And then obviously just LA, straight. You know, yeah. I mean, I love British weather, but <laughs> this cold is biting my every body part. It's, it's unreal. Yeah. So yeah. I'm fully, don't don't think into that too much. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm into some sunshine. You know, California dreaming just for a moment. Um, oh, and, yeah, yeah. I was out there for a little bit, which was really just cool. For, that's the thing. It was just for a little bit. And then I remember we were just saying that on the day of previews, yeah. Like in the afternoon, so you didn't even do a preview. Obviously, with the global pandemic, a lockdown was called and the show cancelled. How did you respond to that? And can you describe how you've continued to find your artistry in this time without obviously fulfilling that opportunity? That opportunity. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, day of first preview. I there was I had no response. I didn't have, like everyone else, I guess, um, who was faced with just that immediate uh, brick wall. Uh, that wasn't one you could get through. Um, yeah. And any kind of plans, any dreams or whatever it was in that moment that you felt was gonna be fulfilled or opportunities, that job. Um, yeah, man, I didn't really have a 
wholesome response to that. Well, one that I could, you know, kind of say, hey, this is the way to deal with it because I still felt terrible. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Unavoidable. Um, and then it was kind of just like looking around and digging, okay, so, okay, so I don't want to get, I don't want to get COVID. So what, how do we, how do we operate? What do we do? Okay, I can't go to this bar. Okay, okay, one more then. You know, uh, I think everyone's going through that process of transition and, and yeah. comprehending the new terrain um and keeping an eye out for covid <laughs> like you might creep around the corner which is you know stay alert you know we listened to that and, and kept our eye out um then i came back to the uk but the uk hadn't locked down it was like another two weeks before it locked down um so that was a bit of a uh a mind warping experience because it was like yo i'm i'm on alert level five and everyone's not even alert right now yeah this is the government saying hey we're good you know and it took another two weeks and yeah that you know the the tragedy that's brought about um creatively i was <laughs> i mean again i was not taking it as seriously i think i'm not the only one but like i was like ah oh, be like a month yeah yeah like oh two months ah uh, you know like psh, end of summer uh okay there's a year gone by yeah, yeah, like another six months and so on and so forth. Um, creatively, the first few months I was playing guitar, I was like, hey, I'm going to really get down with the guitar right now. Um, oh. And also I was doing Zoom calls with youth theatre groups and stuff like that. So it was cool to be able to offer something to um, other groups and people that, that could do my services. Um, but yeah, I was like, hey, I'm going to try and get on this guitar thing that maintained for a while and and then i was like oh this is going to be longer than um the the two months or the one month or whatever um then i found you know again it was like don't which was useful for me it was like not putting pressure on myself to be like i'm gonna come up with this whole thing because you know i've got this time yeah um, because that's a bit of a mad one uh so, but I still managed to just do little things here and there. It could be like write a song um, and feel good about that and say, okay, cool, I've done that for a little bit. Some people are like, you know, on it and power to them. Um, I can be like that, but, you know, in, in, in the circumstances I was, I was not, you know, as much as I tried, it kind of led to like late nights and stuff. And I was like, I'm not really doing myself any favors. What I can really do is actually look after myself. And I found that to be a much more wholesome journey. Is yeah. actually, and it's improved that. Like, so more recently filming and TV tapes and stuff have come up. Yeah. Um, and I felt better in myself doing those. I don't know, it was instead of me, I think it was like, as most people have come to is seeing myself as a human being and taking note of that and my fragilities my vulnerabilities my uh health um just looking into that and, and trying to be good to myself so that's kind of what it became um trying to stay healthy going for jobs and stuff or just trying to stay fit in that respect um which is one way that's my way it's not necessarily the only way also try to watch films um play play lots of play we found it <laughs> um yeah man um yeah. So what what was the process like? Because I know you mentioned you had some TV tapes and I'm sure one of them, you know, came to fruition because you are you yeah. know, part of the cast of Anne Boleyn, which is going to be coming to Channel 5 later this year. So what was that like translating your experiences from theatre to TV? Did you find there were parts of your artistry that you could bring or things that you had to kind of hone your craft and learn new skills for? Yeah, man. So I did just before that, I did a short film called Ice Cream and Donuts, which is really awesome. And that was like done in like a really small window that we managed to find uh, in between like the, the um, lockdowns. Yeah. Um, and so I had a great time doing that. And it was like that was like for me as well, having been away from kind of TV for such a long time, like a, a really good training ground experience as well. And just trying to give the best and learn at the same time. Um, and I was really in, in really great hands there. And then, yeah, and Berlin came along as well, later down the line. I, the transition, um, everything's just a bit smaller, um, more subtle, um, a lot of weighted around, must be said, and that's uh, 
that's just the way it goes in filming because it has to be like you know you you realize you're kind of it's really apparent your place the cog that you are within the mechanism of filming uh, as an yeah. actor you do this thing but then there's lighting sound set design makeup hair not in that order it could be hair and makeup if you like <laughs> makeup um, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah um and all the other departments, which take you know just as much precedent, uh, and more obviously much more precedent, I think in theatre because of you know it's the actors on stage and you know they're just there, it feels like that. But yeah, in terms of the mechanisms of filming, you realise you know you are just fulfilled fulfill this role. Um, yeah. Everything's smaller for sure, um, and met some wonderful people. Had a great time, a really really great time on that. Um, and again, we had a different type of appreciation. I felt it felt like a real. Uh, gratefulness considering the the circumstances surrounding us um it was up in yorkshire which was beautiful i'd never been but the yorkshire nice. well, lovely lovely sights um and people yeah um so yeah that that that's what i've certainly taken from that um all the other kind of aspects of it are the same in terms of how you develop character um but when it comes down to the filming just more subtle, a lot in the eyes, um, and kind of letting that truth still be there, but without kind of uh, displaying it. <laughs> <laughs> to a thousand people, to a thousand, two thousand people. people. <laughs> um, yeah, you have to kind of imagine, it's a very intimate, it's very intimate. Um, and that, that can be in times difficult, right? Because everyone's there and, you know, the intimacy of a scene is not necessarily reflected by the lighting and the sound and the boom over your head and stuff. Um, yeah. That truth has to still be there. Um, you have to kind of let yourself be watched from all angles and go, that's my focus is here. I think a really good um, technique for it is Meisner. Um, right. Wicked technique for, I personally feel, for, for filming. And, and TV because it just brings you into the small details of playing against someone, um, playing with someone who might not always be there, frankly. <laughs> you might be acting to no one. Um, wow. Be there in the edit. Um, yeah, but I'm, again, I'm on a kind of a learning process with that. Um, just holding on to the techniques I've developed since drama school. Um, and, you know, as with anything, you know, you get a few goes at it. That's how we learn. We learn on the job. So I'm still in that process and will be for the rest of my life, as is the way. Wonderful. Wonderful. It has been the best exploration of artistry and craft um, through the eyes of Hamilton and through your journey. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, it's been wonderful to see, you know, try new things. Um, we can't wait to see Anne Boleyn and obviously see the, the wonderful things uh, in, 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 in the future for you just before we go we just want to do a quick quick fire round no, is that no, all right i'm ready let's go this is yeah, it. are you ready <laughs> <laughs> you've been gearing up for it have you yes, man. Okay. Come on, hit me. Come on. <laughs> okay right so uh phantom or lemis lemis Come on, that's the that's the originator. Okay. That's the, the, you know the the precursor to Hamilton. I've got to give love. This to is that. it. This is it. Scone or scone? Uh, what they call it now in Ireland? They say oh, it's a scone. It's a scone. You can't be cool. Croydon or Brixton? Nah, that's uh, that's a mad one. Nah, the cuts the people's man. Uh Brixton because that's where I started. Uh, cool. Uh, Mac McDonald's or a Burger King. Uh, Brixton before it's gentrified. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, neither. No, nah, you'll never catch me in them places. There, I, I used to used to bang okay. and but I can't do it no more, man. Again, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, Strictly or X Factor. Um, um, Strict, strictly because okay. X Factor they mock people, man. They're oh, okay. they're, they're like it's like know. family, isn't it? Yeah, man. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like certain people on there, I'm like, no, nah, why are you doing this to people? Like it's hilarious. Uh, in the early auditions, anyway. Yeah. Um, what about uh, pasta or pizza? That's a mad one. Um, 
Good to officiate. Pass on, pass on, pass on. Okay, uh, Shakespeare or Dickens? I'm going to have to say Shakespeare, uh, Dickens, oh. I'm not the most familiar one, but I'm sure I'd love Dickens. Uh, Weber or Sondheim? Who or who? So Andrew Lloyd Weber or Stephen oh, Sondheim? Sondheim, Sondheim. Uh, custard creams or a, 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 a bourbons? Custard creams. Cool, same. And all the way, uh, swimming or diving? Uh, swimming, diving, man, some scary stuff. <laughs> First, I mean, I can pencil dive, but I, yeah, I've had a couple episodes diving. It weren't, it weren't the best. But swimming, yeah, man. yeah, restaurant, swimming. yeah, just this is nice. You know, you're kind of it's healthy, it's calming, yeah. all the different stuff. <laughs> thank you so much Jamal. it has been so so lovely and you can catch Anne Boleyn on Channel 5 later on in the year thank you so much for joining us in the room wish you all the best with my love